Skype for Business. So what is Skype for Business? Well, Skype for Business is a communication tool that allows people to communicate with their colleagues, friends and family from anywhere around the world. There are two Skype applications. Typically, a consumer version of Skype may be installed on your PC already via Windows updates. However, Skype for Business is a full feature-rich version of Skype represented by a slightly different icon as shown here on my desktop. Okay, instead of taking you through an hour showing you every single granular setting available in Skype, I'm gonna give you a brief overview of the most important bits, followed by a quick demo of how this application is most commonly used day to day. So, starting with the application itself and its interface, if we just open Skype for Business, we then are presented with a login screen. My credentials are saved because I've logged in before using the app using my company Office 365 credentials. So at the top of the screen there's a prompt uh, or a field that says what's happening today. This is where you can provide an update that all of your contacts will see with a brief description of what you're doing today. So I can change that to making a Skype video and then next to my name in the contacts lists for my contacts themselves, they'll be able to see that I'm making a Skype video. Below that we have our name, your availability. If we drop that down you can see you can change your status to busy if you do not want to be disturbed and if you're away. These statuses are also linked using 365 to your email. So for example if I go to my Outlook client and set an auto reply So if I turn an auto reply on now, enable that. So you can see automatic replies are now being sent from my uh, mailbox. If we minimize this, you can then see here that it's changed my status to replicate my auto reply set in Outlook or my mailbox uh, via 365. So you can see here it says, thank you for your email, blah, blah, blah. Um, your location can also be set, so it will recognize the public IP um, where you are. So, for example, I'm at home, so I can say, uh, this is my home, which is in Milton Keynes. And next time I'm here, the Skype client will automatically recognize where I am and auto-populate that field with, I'm, I'm at home, Milton Keynes. So you can make that relevant to different offices that you work in, etc., etc. Um, below that you have your list of contacts. So as you can see here, I have a list of my colleagues and external contacts to the business also, which you can organize into uh, groups. Okay, so I need to contact one of my colleagues to ask them for some information, for example, about Office 365. So from my contact list here, um, I'm gonna contact Chris simply by double clicking on Chris and that'll open up an instant message window. So if we just type in here, um, good morning, uh, helps you spell morning correctly, good morning, Chris, and send that over. That'll instantly ping him a message and he'll get a similar window pop up with my message. And he seems to be available because he's replying. As you can see there, it says he's replying. Hi Tom, so uh, let's just ask him, do you have any information about Office 365 and let's see if he can help us out. Again, you can see when he's replying there, it says he's actually typing a message and excellent, sure, what do you need? So at this point in the conversation, I'm gonna decide, you know what, it's probably gonna be easier to have a video call. So would you be able, uh, would you be okay to join a uh, video call? Let's see if he's okay to do a video call with us to further elaborate on the information we need. And yep, he's available. So we click on the video call button at the bottom here and that will give you a preview of your webcam. So you can see there my previous way, so the camera's working and we're gonna go ahead and click start my video. Hi Tom. Hi Chris, I had some questions uh, Office 365 related for a customer who is looking 
to just adopt um, an online exchange. Okay. Just one of which plans would be best. Sure. Do you have any details? How many users do they have? Um, so it's quite a small company, around 50 users. Okay. Do you know what sort of features they need? Um, they're just looking for exchange only on its own. Okay. Well, you could do that with uh, Exchange Online Plan 1. Uh, it's a really basic setup and gives them everything they'll need. Excellent. Okay. Um, where can I find some more information about this, uh, the plans? Uh, it's all online. I can show you here. Two secs. Uh, so everything's online. Uh, this page gives you all the features of Exchange Online Plan 1 and you can compare against uh, the other Exchange Online Plan as well. So if later on they wanted to adopt uh, the enterprise features uh, such as in-place hold or archiving with unlimited storage, uh, they can do that uh, by stepping up to Exchange Online Plan 2. Excellent. Okay, well, thanks very much for taking my call, Chris. I'll, uh, I'll read through information and, and take it from there. No worries. Thanks, Tom. Thanks very much. Bye. Bye. I hope that simple demo helped you gain a better understanding of what Skype for Business is typically used for. Instant messaging is the first line of communication. Video calling allows for even quicker interaction. And finally, Chris was able to share his screen with me so I could see what was on his PC. A final mention to wrap up this basic product overview should be its multi-platform availability. Skype for Business supports Android, Mac OS, and of course, Windows mobile devices. I've taken some screenshots from an Android device to show how easy it is to enable your Skype for Business solution to go beyond the boundaries of your PC or laptop. Simply search for Skype for Business in the App Store, select Skype for Business, and click Install. It'll ask you to uh, approve access to parts of your device. Once it's installed, open the product. Agree to the terms of use. Put in your credentials. Put in your phone number. You can choose to sync your contacts with your Skype contacts too. Then you get three tutorial screens which give you some tips and advice. And that's it. When it's installed, you'll see recent contacts that you've uh, discussed or had instant messaging conversations with on Skype for Business and also your uh, next calendar appointment if it's linked to your exchange. If I was to go into uh, the Chris contact, for example, it would even show me the last dialogue we had between us, which was uh, a link sent to me about Azure um, last week on Friday. For more detailed Skype for Business information, head over to skype.com and search for business. There you'll find details on conducting meetings with up to 250 people, even if they're not on Skype, and other information related to office integration and security. If you didn't know what Skype for Business was, then I hope you have a rough idea now. For support on this product and to find out how Office 365 can enhance your business, go to myris-it.co.uk.